Good morning, Geek Show. This is Alex, live from Ignite, and with me I got, as always, Eric. Hey, Eric. Hi, Alex. <laughs> You're here. We are at Ignite. Woo! Ignite is on. Yeah, that's great. We are in Orlando. Yeah, back in Orlando. Last year we've been here. This year we are here. And, like always, we have some special guests, Laura and Brad. Hey, hey hello. Guys. Good hello. morning. Hello. Yeah, so that was cool. Maybe first give us a short introduction. This will be great, though, that people from Europe start to, to get to, the, to know you, so. Absolutely, yeah. so my name is Laura Hunter. This is Brad Burrows. We are from the Azure management team. Uh, specifically, we're part of the customer experience team for Azure management, and so best way to think about customer experience is that we are embedded with the folks who build the products, but our role is to be customer facing, to come to events like Ignite, and to uh, work with customers around what's good in the product, what's bad in the product, what's missing in the product, and take that feedback back to our engineers so that they can go out, go forth and build a better product. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, we, we can be your voice and advocate inside engineering, so we can drive through you know, we want the background pink this month. You know, that's, we're going to drive a voice for the customers and the partners of the product. So it's really good. It's a cool role. We sit a, a leg each side of the fence, if you like, and it's a great way. We get to talk with our engineers, but we get to talk with all the customers and partners here at Ignite as well. Sounds like an interesting role. So, yeah, this day started with the great keynote of Satya. So, uh, so many people in the room and, and such a feeling in the room. So Always it was, impressive. It was, it was absolutely Huge impressive. Huge crowd, eh? It was yeah, big it was, in there. It was crazy. The yeah. best thing was when they all left the room and there had been only four escalators to bring the people out. <laughs> <laughs> it's always about logistics. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like lemmings, thing. isn't it? Sort of going up the escalators this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then actually we had the Scott Guthrie session with lots of news yeah. in Azure, like I think Ultra SSD is something everybody's wow. super excited about. 160,000 IOPS. Uh, we have all those data box things with a funny name like data box heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this name. Yeah. And actually, it's 240 kilos, so it's, it's it heavy. Is heavy. Yeah, Literally, it is it's heavy. physically heavy. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think there are so many announcements, and probably if you've not seen it right now, you can have a look into the recordings. But we have some news in the management stuff. We I do think. indeed. So probably just let us know first, what does Azure management mean at all? So w what does it cover? Yeah. Uh, what does not cover? So, because people, I think, are just about oh, management is the portal, mm -hmm. and that's all. So, oh, no. we, got way, we got way more than give the us, portal. Give us some some insights. So much bigger than that. Oh yeah. Sorry. So when you so when you think about when you think about Azure, think about the th and you think about the things that Azure does. You think about compute. You think about network. You think about storage, IoT, machine learning, all the things. Uh, the Azure management team, the Azure management space is around uh, providing tools and services that allow customers to take the stuff that they have entrusted to us and put in the Azure cloud and to keep them uh, secure and well managed. And so if you think about putting your IaaS VMs, uh, virtual machines in the cloud, well these are still your VMs, these are still your boxes. You want them to be patched, you want them to be monitored, you want them to be up to date. Uh, Azure management provides tools around uh, services that allow you to do that. Uh, you want your services to be, you want your Azure resources to be secure, you want them to be protected against, hey, you know, you left that RDP that RDP port open to the internet and didn't stick uh, it no, behind a firewall. Ne never, I've never ever, ever seen it. Nobody ever seen does that. that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if if there were if there were a service that could you know smack you upside the back of the head and say, fix that. You know that's that's yeah. one of the services that we offer. Also around another big component is around Azure migration services, okay. and so taking your existing on-prem resources and uh, being able to not just lift and shift them into the cloud, but also be able to uh, provide some intelligence around. Hey, you're moving these you're moving these VMs up into the cloud. Let's plunk an agent on them. Let's give them a little bit of analysis to say, you know, maybe these things only need to be a D4 instead of a D8, or you know, maybe we need. This this smaller skew versus this bigger skew, uh, we can start doing some man some modeling around cost management. If you stick this thing up in the cloud, maybe let's say it's a really high performing system and you need one of those super IOPS kinds of things oh going yeah, uh, for your storage, <laughs> here's roughly what it's going to cost you, and here's how you can maybe model and optimize those costs until we all find the tree upon which you know money is grown. Yeah. 
And, and actually, I, I think this right-sizing stuff is something yeah. people always forget because it's like, okay, we have it on-premises, it's running like this, and so we put it in the cloud, and then everybody's complaining about cost, but never ever thought about, okay, we have those 24 gigs of RAM, mm -hmm. but we only use four. Absolutely. Uh, on-premises, nobody felt it because mm -hmm. it was there, yes. and, and now we have to pay for it. And, and it, so this right-sizing thing is absolutely. pretty interesting. Absolutely, and that is, a, that is a change of mentality uh, that I think we that I think we as IT professionals need to start uh, driving into our customers, into our enterprises. That uh, cost was not necessarily an IT skill set. It wasn't things that we yeah, thought about. Yeah, yeah. You know, we just spent money. We just we just we just, we spent, just spent the money. Yeah. More to the point, we spent um, IT made capital expenditures. We bought a big honkin' server every three years and we knew we were only going to get one chance to do it, yeah. so we completely overspect it, yeah. with the result that most servers sitting in on-prem data centers are running at less than 10% CPU utilization. Well now Azure, that's a monthly expenditure, that's an operational cost. We can now start talking about, let's scale up, let's scale down, yeah, it's let's like It's like paying your water bill, it. so you won't let the, the drain open all the day because you mm -hmm. have to pay for it. So. Right, and we can start doing things like who here has had their kids run their cell phone data plan up up, up over a limit, and they get the text from their you know from their yeah. cell phone provider. That's monthly in my house. That's that's weekly. This is why my kids my still house. have no phones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, from an enterprise perspective, we can start doing things like alerting and helping you to be intelligent around. You know, you've got that server that's been up and running, and you've been paying for it for a month, and it really hasn't done any operations maybe you want to turn that one down you know okay. things like that that's good Brett what, what's what's your daily business look like so we heard you have contact yep. to the product groups to the customers and so so how, how to imagine that is it so is it a good thing or a bad thing oh it's awesome <laughs> no, look it's the best thing ever where I get to go out and talk with partners I get to hear where they're trying to do things at scale so Laura spoke about, you know, we were trying to get the voice of the customer and there with our partners, it's all about building things at scale. So we want to make sure that partners can actually have the tool sets, the products, so they can do a one to many, one to a thousand, one to a hundred thousand type of model. So my day encompasses talking to partners, understanding what their needs and wants are, and then trying to be an advocate inside the, the product groups, you know, we've got to bring, we, we rely on data. So you can't, we can't walk in and say, I feel today that I want to have this done. Hey boss's boss let's make that happen we've got to present the data and the argument to be able to drive that through and the most rewarding thing is actually when you see the ask of the partner and a few months later that thing gets built and we can walk back and say hey that thing that you needed from us that was a blocker we just delivered it go forth and conquer you know and that's the that's the rewarding part of the job yeah I mean that's uh, super important let's let's maybe come to the announcements that, yeah. that were dropped at mm. night can you maybe tell us a little bit what what you what you guys announced Blueprint. Blueprint. So, Blueprints. Blueprints. Yes. Blueprints, Blueprints are amazing. Hot today. So, I've, I've met with partners all morning. I got pulled into various things. And for those of you who don't know, we just announced Azure Blueprint. Um, this probably is one of the most powerful tools for a lot of our customers, our partners, to be a go out there and use at the moment. Think of the ability to standardize what your environment is, to be able to configure environment with uh, reliability and the configuration. but. Beyond that, you can go out and pull in the governance, security, the policies. You can go call ARM templates. You know, you can package all this up. Uh, for partners in my space, especially, they're going MSPs are like loving this concept. You know, oh yeah, Stand yeah. Well, for you guys, like you can have gold, silver, bronze. You can have blueprints that actually standardize across multiple customers and partners. So that has been like the one thing I've been almost losing my voice over all morning. Just everyone's loving the blueprint side. Um, for you, what have you found? Uh, so a absolutely blueprints. Uh, I think the the announcement that uh, Scott made this morning around uh, Azure Data Explorer, which yeah. is uh, there has been this uh, internal to Microsoft thing called Custo that we've been using for what is it two three two, yeah. two or three years now, and it is this amazing data lake service that can, that allows you to reach into your Azure assets into your Office 365 assets into basically all of your all of your Microsoft hosted assets and be able to pull very extremely rich data and rich telemetry around how is that VM functioning? 
uh, how many emails am I pro am, am I am I processing on a day on a daily, weekly, hourly basis? Um, and it's this amazingly it's this amazingly rich service that uh, has up until now very much been within the Microsoft fold. And I don't know about you, but a lot of times I will I, I would be going to a customer yeah. and they would ask me a question, Laura, how can I get this data that I need to be able oh, to run oh, my yes, business? Right. And I would go, well, that's simple. You just query Custo, and then you oh. <laughs> Wait. Damn. <laughs> Turn it. Yes, I, I, actually, today you fill the gap. So mm -hmm. because we had so many cool things, we had the ARM templates, yep. mm -hmm. we had role-based access control, we had Azure policies, we had, but it was always piece for piece for piece, mm -hmm. and everybody who was managing more than one environment, yep. it was like, okay, that's nice, but how to deal with it? How do you build a um, scale, right? Yeah, and actually, yeah. so for me, I'm working for an MSP. We are ex Azure expert MSP, so. Yeah. For us, it's like, okay, probably we have 5,000 customers next month and, and we have to roll out some new stuff. So mm -hmm. how to do it in a good way and how to give it to our customers and to say to them, okay, you have to do this with, with ARM and this with PowerShell and this with CLI and, yeah. mm -hmm. and this thing you have to do in the portal because right now we don't have a good way to do it automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, right now it's just like having a blueprint fired up and if everything is set up, you have the data insights to, mm -hmm. to figure yep. out what's, it's, it's, it's awesome. And I see our customers asking for other blueprints that we made for uh, other customers and, and we can bring this into the project and it will give us a lot of speed. That's a, that's a common question. So how, how do others do this in the yeah. market? Or you, you hear this? Do you have best practices? <laughs> yeah, we, I get asked that a lot from you mentioned best please. practices. Yeah. <laughs> like GDPR for you guys over in Europe at the it's moment. Oh no, no, this is not a, not a topic. In no, no. <laughs> 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 But yeah, it's been interesting to see how best practices have been done across different solutions. And I think these type of tools are going to give partners the ability to, to do repeatable processes, right? Which is what you're talking about, the ability to standardize stuff, you know? It's been, yeah, it's a good day, very yeah. good day for us. And, and I think that what we're, what we're going to start seeing, obviously, you know, you know, very early days, we've just announced blueprints. I yeah. think what we're going to see is going to be partnerships between the blueprint, which is the, here's how you declare the thing that I want to configure. I think we're going to start seeing um, partnerships between blueprints and then governance organizations and, and policy organizations of here's what a HIPAA blueprint might look like. Here's what a SOX blueprint yeah. might look like. And, and this is actually what the customers are asking for. So mm -hmm. they are like, so how is the best way to build a data warehouse solution in Azure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yes, you have some documents uh, anyhow that state this could be a structure and this could be this, but actually, in the end, nobody knows really how to do it, and actually, they are still asking, "What's the best way?" And how, what's the best way to implement yes. it in the right. end, and and to govern it? Because right now, as we all know, Azure is moving fast. So, mm -hmm. what we oh, think yeah. is the best practice today could be old stuff in two weeks. So, you, you've got an organization who's got 600 line of business apps, and now Windows 10 ships every four months. Yeah, you're how, right. how, <laughs> how do you recertify? Welcome to the Windows Insider program, where you can get an early view at these bits, yeah. so that you don't have to be rushing around like your hair is on fire. <laughs> That's a good thing. And one of the things on the blueprints, I, I don't know if it was really ham at home this morning, is that for the developers, if you swim upstream and you're actually a developer with our products, you can actually call the blueprint as part of your code when you're actually building your application. So developers early on can actually have it, they can deploy to a test environment or, you know, and then suddenly they've got standardization of configuration and everything. So you can actually start to embed that really early in the, in the cycle of the app so that you get that standardization, you get that, it's all natively built in. So if you start looking at cloud-based apps, suddenly they can call all the ARM environment or the IT department can provide them a standard blueprint which says, hey, here's a DevOps blueprint. You guys use this, you don't build your own VMs anymore. So that's some cool stuff as well that I think we're going to see developers starting to lead on. Yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely letting our, letting our developers take yeah. manageability and security and rather than having those be just bolt on after the fact and does anything work well when you bolt it on after the fact? No, of course not. Yeah, yeah. It allows us to take, the, to take, those, um, take those artifacts and shift them left yeah. Yeah. so that then security and manageability simply become part of your CI CD pipeline. I think this is one of the important things. So Alex is from the security space of the world so actually he's such a security guy. Yeah, I'll always come shit with all the binary on yeah, there. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> so actually he's, he's complaining always <laughs> about security and, and right now it's like developers are just like I have to push out my stuff Correct. Yes. and security is here's some kind that's there. They're pushing back right a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually I, I saw this in our internal development group and they were asking me like okay yeah we've built some great stuff now but 
Uh, can, can you probably have a look? So uh, yeah. <laughs> we're not sure right now. And actually, what, what do you think, Alex? Is this something what developers and, and people from the security staff will accept as a as a way to to bring security into practice? Yeah, I definitely think that uh, because yeah, like you said, I mean. The development is getting quicker and quicker, and for us as the security guys, we have to secure all that. And I mean, it's it's so great that Microsoft gives us a way to like track everything that was uh, was developed, and, and and then we can see okay, how can we fix that, and how can we bring it to a security level that we are confident with, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you can think of you can think of the evolution of that then being how we start integrating Blueprint with something like desired state configuration, yeah. Yeah. where we where we're at this point we're we're just handling the end to end. We are providing we're providing the security team a way to say here is my intent, here is my security intent for my enterprise, but without needing to stand in the way of the developer who wants to go fast, who needs to go fast, who wants to have all of that agility of the cloud, True. which is why we adopted the cloud to begin with. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So one one part of the of the full Azure management stuff is also the Azure policy part. So we have it right some time now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's growing and growing and growing. I don't know, we have hundred or more integrated policies right now, mm -hmm. uh, out of the box policies. Yes. The ability to bring in own policies and actually many people don't know that they, for example, can enforce naming policies. I was always, also he, he was laughing at me <laughs> when I kicked off the first conference with a session about naming, con uh, naming conventions in Azure. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, hey, naming is, Naming is, you, you've got a name in Azure, so nobody, nobody, nobody takes name? care of it. It's a name, yeah. what, have um, one. And then actually they, they had a look into their, to their bill or into mm, their yeah. resource list or they tried to automate things and then it started to get complicated. And, mm -hmm. and the best thing I've ever seen was when it comes to tags, tagging yes. for cost management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then somebody told it department Somebody t uh, used DEPT, somebody yeah. used the German word Abteilung, mm -hmm. and then they tried to figure out where to bring the cost to. So, and it was like, okay, so this is why you need some naming conventions. This is, <laughs> naming conventions. This is why you need uh, tags. And, and we have all this policy stuff. So, uh, what do you think? What, what was the, or is right now the, the blocker for people to use policies? Because actually, I have so many customers not knowing about it and mm -hmm. not using it right now. What do you think, or what you know is a blocker, and what do you hope to see in the future? Uh, at people. Hmm. So, I, so I think um, part of the part of the challenge, which hopefully we've resolved this week, uh, was sim was simply an awareness. Okay. Uh, po uh, policy yeah. as a service has actually been generally available uh, since May. It yeah. is it is ba it is baked into the service. It is bolted into the service. By the way, did I mention it's free? You just get it. <laughs> just you use it. You, you, <laughs> ju you just get it and you just use it. Uh, but I think uh, simply because. Let's face it, the, the Microsoft marketing calendar is what it is. This is our big you know, marketing moment of the year, but we wanted to get policy out there so that people could start using it. Uh, and so I think maybe there was a lack of an awareness. Uh, there's, also, uh, there's also just some, uh, some other bits that, uh, that we announced this week around management groups, which is going to be giving you that, something that I think enterprises have been clamoring for, which is the ability to apply things like policy at a level higher than the subscription, and yeah. and for that, an organization that has yeah. a ton of subscriptions, I think that that's uh, that's really going to be a key enabler uh, for policy. Uh, and at least at, at least in uh, in the United States, uh, anytime we deploy a, a new service into Azure, I can I can wait about five and a half seconds before the first <laughs> the first conversation yeah. of is it available in our in our specialized clouds in our government clouds things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's uh, a thing which c always comes up, and uh, I w it was one of the last conferences I was. I, I, I made a sentence, mm -hmm. <laughs> and everybody in the room was quiet after this because I said, "In Azure, nobody cries for you." <laughs> just, I'm stealing just, that. Just let yeah. it say. I'm stealing that. <laughs> and Azure, nobody cries for you from two perspectives. So first, if you run a script mm -hmm. automatically to spin up. I don't know, M128 VMs. Mm -hmm. So an M128 is around 25,000 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. um, and probably if you put a 10 into your, yeah, <laughs> in exactly. your template, yeah. nobody will be there and say, oh, you, you didn't want that. Oh, we are so sorry. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay mm -hmm. for. This is the first thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing is if you delete something mm -hmm. and yeah. you forget to have a backup before or mm -hmm. you have to have a template or a mm -hmm. blueprint of it, mm -hmm. exactly. it's yeah. gone. And mm -hmm. I've seen customers People removing, yeah. mm -hmm. removing uh, subscriptions mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
but not just deactivating the subscription so that they have, could have <laughs> a right. way back. So mm -hmm. they're just like removing all the resource groups and then figuring out it was the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I now have fantastic news for you, which is that Azure Management yes. cries for you. <laughs> Azure Management will be the service that comes that's up good, and says, good. did you really mean to spend $25,000 on VMs this month? Really? Let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah probably it's, a, it's good to have a look at this. And even if you spend 25000 bucks, make it secure. So mm -hmm. that not exactly. anybody else is using mm -hmm. it right now. Yeah, Brad, totally is there scary. anything, uh, any other feature you... Yeah, you're Azure, really migrate. Azure Migrate. Azure Migrate, yeah. yeah. We've done, we done a lot around migration from getting people from X to Y. And I think where we're starting to see a lot of the development now is around like migration where ISVs are coming and plugging on top of like a fabric almost. Um, and we're seeing ISVs coming through where they're, they're actually building, extending the platform, making it smarter, leveraging all our discovery side of things, but getting, for example, like SAP ISVs or something like that. So we're starting to see, I think, the migration side of it really kick off at this point in time. And people are going, it's not just a box Microsoft product anymore, it's actually something we can extend and build and there's an added value service for ISVs. So we've seen that starting to kick off a little bit now, we're starting to see some announcements coming out. So I like, I'm, I'm liking the migration stuff as well. So actually, I, I don't want to be mean, but oh Azure no. Migrate had, had this one little problem, the lack of support for Hyper-V. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, yeah. in the early in the early stages, so yep. uh, maybe why is that? <laughs> I would love to just watch this space. Yeah, yeah that's okay. all we can say. Watch mm -hmm. this space. Yeah, that's okay. But actually, this was everybody was wondering about. Oh, so yeah. and there was a, it, it. It looked that cool, and mm -hmm. it, it's working like hell. And it's you've got everything in there what you need, yeah. and mm -hmm. then it was just missing this little piece. <laughs> Everyone's but like, why VMware? Why not our own stack? You know, we've done all this great work, but yeah, just watch yeah, the space. Watch it, the space. it will be there, okay. Yeah, watch watch the space. Space. yeah we, we will have a look at this. And uh, actually, uh, when it comes to migration, people are back at the topic, like how to do it best. And so it, yeah. it, it will circle around to all those policy stuff and, mm -hmm. and all of this. And then we are at the point, I have migrated everything. Yep. I probably have secured it. And then there's this cost management stuff. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> it's all connected. <laughs> it's all connected, yeah. So uh, right now, in the, in the past weeks, we've seen some investments into the Azure portal about cost management. Yep. Mm -hmm. We've Definitely. seen budgets popping in, and we've seen uh, new views for for uh, for uh, cost management. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think people are good with cost management right now, or do you think there's some work to do? So, so <laughs> you know, you know what? We're all we're all friends here. Everyone on the camera, we're all friends here. Uh, I, th I think every, everyone's aware that our, our cost management uh, investment started with the investment of with the investment of Cloudin. Yeah, absolutely. And let let's just be pragmatic. When you acquire a new company, it takes a while yeah, that's, to yeah. get all of the bits from their stack onto our stack, uh, and so we are in the we're in the process of. Oh, yeah. Taking all of taking all of all of that cloud and goodness and integrating it directly into the Azure portal, you're already starting to see that come up. Uh, are we done as of today? No, absolutely not. There, there's work to do. There's uh, there's difference in functionality versus whether whether you're an EA versus a CSP. We know this is important, and we have a an entire massive team of people <laughs> in Redmond who are coding as fast as their little fingers can code. I think one of but the not this week because they're all here answering your questions about cost management. That's I think good. also the thing is we're extending the APIs. There's a lot of APIs out there for developers and for MSPs especially to be able to plug into from that side of things. So I think watch the space, make sure we do our jobs, hold us accountable to getting the communications out to you guys. Mm -hmm. But as we open up these APIs and you as partners can, and customers can dial into this stuff, um, yeah, a lot more is going to be exposed to you guys. Yeah. And, to, and tell us what you need. Yes. Looping, looping back to we are yeah. straddling the oh, line between the customers. <laughs> and the customers. Yeah, see, you know who I am now. <laughs> it's all over. So I know you're just in. So did, yeah. I did I mention I speak German? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think one important thing is to people are sometimes complaining about getting data out of uh, of Azure. Mm -hmm. So now, like you said, yeah. we have some good tools for mm -hmm. this. But what I have to say is, if you don't feed it with good data. If you don't have tax in place, if yeah. you don't have a good naming convention mm -hmm. in place, if you don't have a proper plan how to do it, you cannot complain about not getting r out the right data for you. Bad so in, bad out. That's mm -hmm. the model. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's one of the most important things. And what we see quite often is people just starting mm -hmm. 
not thinking about anything, and then they start complaining, and that's we, that's not how it works. So we <laughs> even see, we even see this internally to Microsoft, as you might imagine. We have no. we have <laughs> <laughs> we have you significant re investments in Azure and Azure subscriptions inside of Microsoft for our development environments, for our demo environments. When you go and see our director Jeremy Winter speak uh, speak, uh, he's going to be running out of this uh, out of this de um, shared environment that mm. we manage as part of our team. And even we, as the admins of our own subscription, had to walk in there a couple, about six weeks ago and say, I don't know what half of this is, and send a <laughs> note out to all of the PM owners saying, y'all need to tag your stuff, and if you don't tag your stuff, I'm going to start deleting it. Yeah. They didn't believe me. And you did? You did? And then I started yeah. deleting things. Oh. And, She's and vicious in this deletion. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm vicious. Okay, I decommissioned. I didn't delete. I made it so they could get it back, but still, I would. I got the probably the same calls that any IT person does. Of where did my thing go? I have the receipt. You said you were going to tag it. You didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's uh, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, so from the security perspective, probably this is something Alex really likes because we have all those security sender stuff in, in Azure, mm -hmm. yep. and I think this really helps people to get all those insights. You probably have missed yes. this open port mm -hmm. anyhow. Um, What's, what's new in there, just to let the people know? Uh, sure, so th uh, things that you're going to be seeing in Security Center, I think uh, one of the big things is going to be around uh, Security Center is going to start exposing uh, Secure Score. Okay. And so that's going to be, uh, if you're familiar uh, with Office 365 Secure Score, uh, which is also announced this week, very, very similar concept where we're going to assess the security footprint of your Azure environment and we're going to give you the equivalent of a credit score, and we're going yeah. to give you a score of here's how we're seeing how how, thing, how things are looking inside of your environment. And that's Do benchmarked you? against other. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, it's yeah. benchmarked against other ourselves and other partners as well. Yes, so you're not absolutely. just getting a remember the Windows score benchmark you get in the Windows Seven back in the day. Oh, yeah, 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 now yeah. this is actually comparing you against other people. And you mentioned before, how do I perform? Here you go. Here's a way of actually. Yeah. How you yep. Perform. Yep. And, and so there's the benchmarking, and then there's also we provide you uh, we provide you steps for remediation. My score is terrible. How do I make it better? Do this, 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 and this. Yeah, that's so important. I mean, this is exactly the same uh, question that that we answer here. People ask for okay, how 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 do we do? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Are we are we secure? Or are we not? Are what, we secure enough? Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's that's the million dollar question. Have you yeah, reached yeah. a level where you say mm -hmm. you're you're secure? And I mean that's the the answer for that. You you will find your answer in your secure score and you mm -hmm. have your uh, um, your ideas. You will you, you get some some uh, recommendations to to hire your score and then get your environment secure more secure. Yeah. I mean that's I that's think good the thing. the important thing is because people sometimes think like when we go to Azure. Microsoft is doing everything for everything, us. Everything, yeah. yeah. So because it's we call that the Azure security anti-pattern. And they would do, yeah. It's in the cloud. It is. must be secure. <laughs> uh, maybe. So I have it quite often with VMs, and yeah. then it's like, uh, why wasn't there a backup? Mm -hmm. my, my, I put my VM to to Microsoft, and they didn't do a backup of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's always like, uh, okay, it's still your. Uh, so maybe mm -hmm. you should have done, mm -hmm. and now it's too late. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So so actually, I think this is an, an important point that secure score and to be honest when I first saw secure score for Office 365 I was like wow a pointing system <laughs> 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 and then I, I figured out what it is and yeah. it really shows you the actions to take it shows you mm -hmm. okay Microsoft is doing this 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 and this but on a particular level it's your it's your afford to bring in more security yes and, and that's a good thing for um, for the Azure thing too and to be honest we had some things like this already in the past. We had Azure Advisor. Mm -hmm. yep. Many people don't know about it, and many people didn't use it, but it's, it, it was always a good thing because it, it showed you, hey, if you some VMs, they are not encrypted. You have here some networks without a network security group. You have so little mistakes. And I think now we get some more insight and some more information with the secure score, and, and I think and that's a good thing. And we're, and we're rolling out uh, cost, cost um, advice. In okay. Azure Advisors, we're, we're going to start seeing that in, in your Azure Advisor section, where we're going to start making recommendations around cost. Yeah, yeah Secure Score is something that works works pretty good in uh, Windows Defender ADP. We we got that in in, in yeah. the very first uh, feature releases, where you can see all the security features in there, and and then people ask, okay, what is this exploit guard feature, and 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 how much impact has it to our Secure Score? And I'm, uh, that works perfectly, and I'm I'm pretty sure that it will be the same for Azure. So yeah. 
definitely. Yeah. I have a security question for our security person over there. Do you use our security <laughs> graph at all? Do you plug in and give it a go? Because we, we, we talk about it a lot. Interesting from your side. Are you guys using it? Uh, well, I think, um, yeah, there are customers that, that, that are curious what it is and, and, and how they can use it. But I haven't seen so many customers that have it in productive use and get things out of it. How do you do, think? What do you think? Oh, okay. uh, to be honest, not really. So I, yeah. I, I think, yeah, people may have heard about, okay. but actually they don't know how to do it. That's, yeah. that's always the same thing because, the, uh, now don't be mad with me, but actually people are back at the, I have to click when it's Microsoft because it's Windows and we can click. Yeah. And as soon as it comes to querying. And as soon as it, it becomes a developer play or a PowerShell. Yeah, kind of thing, then yes. it's always something like, okay, this is not my, this is not my space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this was the, the same reaction we had when it comes to uh, infrastructure as code. And the first time ARM templates, everybody was like, hey, okay, this is stuff for the developers. So it's not my yeah. fault yeah. that yeah. there's some code anywhere. What, what's this JSON <laughs> business? <Yeah>. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and the developers were like, uh, this is about infrastructure, so it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly what I mean. We do the workshops with them and show them how to deal with that. But then after the workshop, it, it just stops. They, they don't go ahead and, and continue just like when the consultants back in, maybe we can have another look into that, but mm -hmm. they don't yeah, do that I, on I th their own. I think where, where Security Graph is going to start showing some real value, to your previous point around partners and around, around ISVs, yeah. are going to be when we see partners, and we're already seeing it, like we already have part, uh, partnerships with uh, other, uh, other ISVs who are taking uh, Security Graph. For those of you who aren't familiar with Security Graph, it's basically, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a programmatic API that allows you to query the Microsoft security data lake to give you information about, tell me every security thing you know about Laura. Tell me about some sus some suspect logins that she's had or some, mal uh, some malicious attachments uh, that have come into her inbox. And so uh, what we're seeing are uh, security partners who are taking their existing security products and their, their existing security solutions and enriching their existing solutions and their existing data sets with this Microsoft security graph data. And I think that that's where we're really going to start seeing yeah. like the value even, and even, the power. Even basic Power graph. BI dashboards, mm -hmm. you know, exposing what's going on in an organization, you know, compliance, um, you know, like Laura said, you know, did Laura log on in Hong Kong and then Australia in five hours? Oh, let's flag that thing. You know, all that sort of exposure being to pull that up. So. That's how we're starting to see a little bit more as well. But yeah, we need to, good, good feedback. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and sometimes I think it's, these are the little things, because what I see quite often, for example, is when they start doing infrastructure as code, yeah. they push out their deployment, and there's an arrow in there, and they do it again and again and uh, again and again and again, and never figure out why it's not working like expected. Correct. Uh, and things like this to figure out better what happened, and maybe it was just a mistake because it had some, some issue in my code, but on the other hand side, probably somebody tries to break my policies. So mm -hmm. sure, right. it's always a good thing to have a look into it because it's, it's good to have tools to control and it's good to have tools that lock, but if never ever somebody looks into it, it doesn't help at, at you all. You've got to be able to report it and correct it, right? You know, once you find it, you got to know what the problem is and then how to actually correct it and then remediate it down mm -hmm. the track. Yeah, yeah. that's a good, that's a good and uh, an important thing. Um, so actually, there's one other thing which is pretty important for me okay. and it's, uh -oh. I think, not not everybody has heard of it. So it's the Azure Graph thing. Resource Graph. Mm -hmm. Resource Graph. Ah, ah, sorry, yes, sorry, yes. sorry. Yes. So I, I didn't heard of it. <laughs> Could you explain what, what this is? Look, it, it's another exposing of an, an API to our resources environment, which allows you to query through uh, like the likes of Bash, and you can export out, you can do a query of how many VMs do we have doing this? And then you can export that out, and it'll give you as a JSON file. Right? So suddenly you can actually, once you get a hold of that graph and that data, then you can start manipulating, you can start querying it, but then you can take that out, export that out as reusable code. Um, and it's in a simple query languages, you know, from that side of things. So stuff like, again, we're exposing our APIs, we're making it easier for people to get into the systems, um, third party systems, open source systems, be able to get in and query what's going on inside the environment from that side of things. So, Rather than going through the GUI, some people like the command line still, so it opens up from that side of things. And I hate to say it, but if you've got more than, what, 2,000 VMs in your subscription, yeah. have fun opening the portal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. And, and, and instantiating that, and then finding out who's doing what with this particular VM, and then 
getting that out. But the cool thing that, and, we, and it was quite funny, we were at an event yesterday where we were talking about this, and we, we had people fist pumping in the room that had been waiting for this ability to, <laughs> to get a JSON file out from the other side. Yeah. So this is cool. This is, again, this is listening to what our, our customers and partners need, providing them the tools to do things at scale from their side of things. Yeah, and actually, when you say more than 2,000 VMs, these are the questions like, okay, do we have VMs without managed disk? Mm -hmm. exactly. When you start querying this or just start figuring this out in the portal, it's not that comfortable at all. <laughs> so you I see think, the little circle. Yeah, so, sometimes yeah. just we'll wait. four seconds, yeah. mm -hmm. minutes or so. But <laughs> actually, I think the resource graph. I uh, no, got it right. Yeah. Yes, you did. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Uh, I think it's a good a good thing, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and it looked pretty pretty fast. Yes. Oh yeah. Over oh, thousands goodness. of resources. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think yeah, actually this is what it comes to. So when somebody runs two, five, ten thousand 10,000 VMs, actually he hopefully doesn't do anything in the portal or tries mm -hmm. to do it in the portal. Okay. So actually, hopefully deploys VMs through templates and he's using, <laughs> you, you know, yeah, no you other customers. So. Totally the security sure. person is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, the, but if, if you look at the, uh, the resource graph experience, uh, that's actually going to be, if it's not available today, it's being, uh, we're, we're hydrating it out into all of your Azure subscriptions today where you'll be able to, when you're in that browse experience, you're going to have the, the ability to switch to a preview view and you just click on the little link and all of a sudden, rather than using the traditional traditional portal mechanisms, all of a sudden you're querying off of, you're, you're doing your, your searches off of the Azure resource graph. If you don't like it, psst, you're going to like it. But if you don't like it, <laughs> no you can switch like back. <laughs> you can switch back. Okay, yeah. So actually, there's one magic question okay. in our podcast. Even the, so even every, the question is magically. The, the, okay. the question every is question magically. is magical. <laughs> so and now today we have two answers to it, and you are not allowed to give the same answer. Okay, so we're going to okay. pick one each. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, probably right. you, I give you a second to, okay. to chat yeah. okay. who's answering okay. what. Well. Okay. So if you have a magic wish mm -hmm. in the Azure management space, it can be customer related, it can be product related, it can be, I don't know, Mars related, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what would your magic wish actually be? Magic wish. I'll let you go first because I'm thinking on this. Okay. <laughs> if I if I had a if I had a magic wish, I would love to figure out that magic bullet, that silver bullet, that perfect right answer to be able to provide customers with the information that they need when they're looking for it. Because we have the doc okay, and, okay. and, do and the doc site is and the doc site is amazing, and the work we've done to yeah. transition from Techna to docs has been amazing. But as you as you said yourself, we have customers who we give them all this information, we give them all these capabilities. Yes, but how do I do it? What's the right way yeah. to do migration? So What's the right way right. to do this other thing? Probably need the 100 gigabits express <laughs> route directly to the brain. So mm -hmm. maybe this is a good thing. Exactly. <laughs> we need Laura as a service. Laura Pu as oh Laura publish, as a publish service. To the so internet. You've got Siri, you've got Cortana, you now have Laura as a service. There we there go. go. Okay, is it the user subscription? Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is a money making endeavor now. <laughs> okay, we, we'll do this later. Uh, um, what's your magic wish, though? So? I'm going to get more tactical. Your one was really good. i got to top that one. No, I can't. Um, <laughs> look, I think for me, and I'm going on what I've heard recently, we tell, we tell customers and partners to move from X to Y, from on premise up into the cloud, and you know, we, we're giving them all these tools to be able to do this. We can do these elements, but we always get blocked with apps. Okay. Everything is an app, right? You know, whether it's a Delphi or VB6 to something brand new. So I'd love for us to have a really simplistic way to remove that blocker for our, our customers, right? Because we've got all this cool stuff up there now that they can leverage, but when we go talk to them, it's like, oh yeah, but I got this accounting system that runs on DOS 6.22 still. And you're like, yeah, but if we could take that up and get that up into the cloud, then all of your stuff could be up there. Then all of those things like security graph, we could start doing things around it. So I'd love a way to have a frictionless approach to actually getting a lot of our apps up into the cloud. And, and that's not a blocker anymore. And we've got some tools, we've got ISVs starting to plug it in, but get that up there now, that would embrace the cloud a lot more for me. Okay, yeah, this. Uh Awesome, awesome wishes. We absolutely. are impressed. Yeah. We want now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> we, we, we will handle this. So, yeah, actually, my magical wish for Azure management would be um, that people know about it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, maybe. awareness, awareness, and probably some kind of awareness. Mm -hmm. and that they I'm start, hearing awareness. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. maybe a bit, yeah. <laughs> and that they start thinking about it and that they start doing something because from a consulting perspective, it's good if people never thought about it before, 
because the projects to clean up everything are okay for me. You've got a job for a while. I've got, I've got a job yeah. for a while, yeah, that's okay. But for customer success and for having time to do cooler stuff. Yeah. And, and right now, to be honest, is it cool to patch a server mm -hmm. and in the end of the week say, hey kids, I've patched two servers this week? Or is it cooler to say, okay, I figured out all the insecure servers in my environment and we made it secure. Yeah. And at the same time, we built some, I don't know what the awesome stuff. I think this is what it has to come to. I take second, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want the secure that, thing? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Everything he just said for yeah. security. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be on Okay, so it was an absolutely pleasure to have you yeah, here. Yeah, that's so true. Probably we'll see you next year again, and then you will provide us with even more cool even stuff. Even more awesome news. And then Azure management is crying for us all. Azure <laughs> management is Azure management cares about your cost overruns. Okay, that's we that's want good. to help you fix them. And Laura as a service. Laura as a service. And Laura as a service. We're gonna, that's the goal. We're going to start here and announce Laura as a service. There you go. That's our goal. For next I think year. yeah, that's a good thing. So I you can it. decide if it's more for Inspire or for Ignite. Mm, but I think there will be a point in time. There so. We go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, for Thanks being much. our guests and thank you for you to listening to us and thank you. We have some more things this week. So on Wednesday we have another recording in in the security Yeah, area. we can announce that. Yeah, we'll have uh, Heike Ritter from the Windows Defender ADP team with us. So we are really happy to are yeah. looking forward. And then on Thursday, Thursday morning, it's not a good time for Ooh, me, that's but an early one. Yeah, mm. it's an early one. So, but it's okay. We have another recording with yeah, we'll have um, Paula and uh, another guest. And another that guest, is yes. not uh, announced yet. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned this week. We will have some awesome sessions and also watch the live streams of all the sessions from Azure Management, yep. from us both. That's also okay. And yeah, thank you once again. Thanks and again. See you next Thank time. You. Thanks, guys. Bye bye.